Hello, welcome to Cerulean Arts Gallery. Uh, tonight we're speaking with Noreen Scott Garrity in conjunction with her Cerulean Collective Exhibition, which is on view now through May the 5th. Hello, Noreen. Hi there. <laughs> Thanks for being here. I'm gonna spotlight Tina's camera. So tell us uh, about the show. Okay, well, sort of the overall series of work that I've been working on for the last several years, I think of as sort of an umbrella term as Salem County Romantic, Romantic with a capital R. Um, and it focuses largely on places, sites and places near the Delaware River in Salem County in Southern New Jersey, near where I live. Um, this particular collection of 18 pieces, I've given sort of another title to, I call it When the Morning Comes, A Romantic Sense of Place. So the idea of um, being somewhere for a very long time and knowing that place so well um, and sort of painting the same um, places and motifs over and over again and kind of what comes from, from that idea. Um, and When the Morning Comes also relates to um, my favorite Hollow Notes album, because it's the first track, When the Morning Comes, um, and also um, a direct reference to the light that you'll see in, in some of the works here. Um, not necessarily morning light, but the idea that there's sort of light after darkness. Um, so in 2021, the background for a lot of these, I did, and none of these are from 2021, they're all after that, but I did a, a daily series of watercolors in 2021 that I posted on Instagram every day. And they largely focused on the Delaware River, a place near, near um, where I live called Helms Cove, um, a couple of other places. And so a lot of these kind of grew out of that. I sort of developed almost like a personal vocabulary about the river and the things in the river and even some sites near the river. Um, so development of a personal vocabulary, as I like to say, made up of unequal parts, memory, invention, and observation. And that carries over to the oil paintings. And if you can just hang on this one for just a little bit, this one is a little bit different. Um, this painting is called Into the Woods near Helms Cove. So this is near the water, but it's kind of turning away from the water. And I had done a watercolor of this path that leads off into the woods in 2021 that I always kind of liked. And I decided to do a painting of it. But then I went to see the Matisse show. I don't know if that was about a year ago now um, and up in Philly. And there was this beautiful backdrop called, uh, I think it was called Nymphs in the Forest. And so this painting kind of matches those two images together. So it borrows a little bit from Matisse, um, but is also very much, very close to what I painted as, as the watercolor, which the watercolor is not included in the show because I decided not to put any of those, that 2021 series in that particular exhibition. So how do you decide between oil and watercolor or are you using watercolor as a study or not or um that's a good question I do sometimes use watercolor as study but the ones that you see in the exhibition are intended to be um watercolor works in and of themselves they do tend to be more immediate and faster than the drawings and the oil paintings um particularly the ones that I had done in 2021 were done in a day and I didn't go back and linger on them these um, watercolors are perhaps a little more layered and, and maybe in some cases labored over um, than those more immediate ones that I had done. Um, and again, here's one of, of our garden in the summer. So these very sort of local environs. Um, I used to paint kind of more far away places. I mean, sometimes places I had been, but kind of more what most people think of as more romantic places like in Europe or whatever. And then I decided much like writers kind of write what they know, why don't I paint what I know? Why am I not finding, um, not necessarily just beauty. I mean, even some of the things around here I like to say are, are strange and wondrous and unlovely, but they're interesting too. And, and you can make a kind of beauty out of that. Um, this drawing, I, I hadn't done large, I mean, I had draw, always drawn, but I hadn't done large 
um, mixed media drawings like this in really close to 25 years. Um, and just recently, the, the two new drawings for this exhibition are, are actually the newest work that, that you're seeing here. They're even newer than most of the paintings. And I don't know, something kind of called to me that I wanted to get back to, to, to digging into drawing. So these are kind of a combination of charcoal and pastel and Conti crayon. And although this particular um, image looks, looks very almost imaginary, it's not. The top portion is from um, a place near here called Fort Mott in Salem County. That's an 18th century or 19th century, I'm sorry, Civil War era. Um, it's not exactly a ruin. They have it set up as a museum. So the top part of this very much echoes a part of Fort Mott. Um, and the bottom part borrows from a neighbor who has these kind of, um, I love them, but they're kind of silly lion guardians at, at, on a very typical suburban looking driveway. <laughs> they actually have four of them. And then I kind of added the gate. So the gate is kind of imagined. But recently I've found, um, aside from all the river imagery, you know, the water and the rocks and the sky, uh, aside from that, I find some of the imagery from my past that's always intrigued me cropping in. So, um, so you'll see things like gates and uh, portals or doorways or windows or openings um, have also sort of been creeping back into the work in addition to, to the um, landscapes. Um, that's, a, that's a pool area that's kind of part of a drainage canal here in Penn's Grove, but I always thought the shape and the colors were, were kind of beautiful. So I wanted to paint that. And there are mixed in kind of sprinkled throughout a couple of paintings from our trips to Maine. Um, the one on the top there um, is of rocks at Pemaquid Point Lighthouse in Maine. Um, I had done those. I actually had started those a couple of years ago and then decided to finish them. And I thought uh, it's kind of funny how much, even though Maine is, of course, in many ways, so much more spectacular and beautiful, how some of the cove places echo my little Helms Cove that's only, you know, a quarter of a mile from my house. So did you grow up in New Jersey? I actually grew up in Delaware, um, but, but close by. So the other side of the river. So here's some of the doorways I was talking about. And again, although these look sort of very um, extremely atmospheric and um, the color is kind of heightened, they're actually from real doorways that can be found at Fort Mott. Now, again, I've kind of pushed some of the elements here. Um, I've added the ladder on the right there, which is another one of the motifs that's kind of creeping back in. Um, but it is an actual doorway that's at Fort Mott. Uh, and so you'll see a series of them here. Um, this one is called Glow Red. Um, the next one is Glow Celadon. And then there's the third one, When the Morning Comes. And as I said, they're all inspired by Fort Mott, which is in Finns Point, New Jersey. And that's actually even further south than I am. Um, and, and the color even is not quite as pushed as you might think. Definitely it is in the red one. But in this, the middle one that I call Glow Celadon, um, there is, let me see if I can find my notes about what causes all of this um, weird effects that you see here. Um, there's like water damage, algae, and calcium deposits in this. Um, it kind of looks like a cell, but they never kept prisoners at Fort Mott. They stored uh, armory there. Um, but there is lime scale, which is a lot of the sort of bright green that you're seeing, and strings that are kind of like thin stalactites that are created from the calcium. Now, you don't see those in this painting, but I have painted those before that run kind of from ceiling to floor. So even though this looks very much like, oh, you invented those colors, it's really all probably all started as one shade of concrete, but over the years has turned into this kind of medley of, of these beautiful, uh, well, I think they're beautiful <laughs> colors that the concrete has, has turned. 
So the oils have a lot of texture to them. Yeah, I do love texture. I'm a, I'm a big sucker for texture and oil painting. So this one is actually on panel, which allows me to, add, to build the texture up pretty quickly. The other two larger ones that flank this one are both on canvas. They have a like a semi abstract quality. I mean, they hold the, you know, the structure of a door, but then they become color and shape. Right. Yeah, especially the middle one is is probably the most abstract, and this one perhaps the most realistic. And even though this one again has those rays of light that look like they're sort of imagined, they are partially imagined. But when I was at the mm -hmm. fort that day, the, the light was kind of streaming over in front of this structure and sort of pushing back into space, the door that's darker. So again, you know, I've kind of taken a lot of liberties with it, but it's, it still is probably not as far off of what I was seeing from the actual object as, as you might think. So it seems like nature and the effects of environment, things like that are like the main driver for your work. Yeah, absolutely. And I do kind of do love that atmospheric um, kind of mysterious, you know, I, I do love ruins like, and, and when I was uh, a younger painter, I would sort of seek out ruins, like I said, in kind of more, more exotic, non-American places, but um as I've grown older, I thought, well, they're here, you know, those qualities are here and I can find them um, in my own backyard with, and then just giving it a little, kind of a little push. So this is the other drawing um, and it's almost 70 inches long. Uh, I sometimes have a thing for, for these very odd format sizes. <laughs> so it's, it's very thin and very long. Uh, and this is called Delaware River Pan Panorama. And um, it's it's what I see from the Delaware River um, in Pence Grove. However, I've added this element that you see there right in the front. Um, and I had a painting in the last show, if anybody remembers, that had the same structure. And it, it actually is sort of based on a painting by the German romantic painter, Caspar David Friedrich um, called The Sea of Ice, where there's kind of this wreckage that's busting through the ice. Um, and in this case, it's, it's something that I really did find um, down at the waterfront in the ice. And I just love that that pile of sort of wreckage or stuff or, you know, uh, what do they call that? Like sort of um, tide rack that sometimes piles up on a riverfront or rocks. And in this case, it had, it was icy, but it was sunset and it had this kind of orange glow that cast onto the ice. So um, this painting kind of has that quality too, where it's sort of very cool in places and very hot in places. So this is a mixed media. So what media are you using here? I usually start with charcoal and Conti crayon for a sort of the basic outline. And then the rest of it is pastel. A lot of people have been asking me if it's oil pastel though. It's not, it's just mm. um, regular pastels that are kind of built up. It's funny, I feel like because I guess because I originally started as a oil painter, I feel like I approach both watercolor and drawing with this sort of heavy layering. <laughs> yeah, so do you fix it in between? Uh, I don't fix it in between, although I did find a fixative, a better one that allows me to do that. Um, but yeah, I did have to do a lot of fixing on this one because it's pretty dense. <laughs> mm -hmm. But again, I sort of approach it like I approach a painting. It's sort of layer, layer on layer. Mm -hmm. um, as some areas are kind of more built up than others, just like in the paintings. Yeah, that kind of texture usually you find in the oil pastel. Uh, so to find it in the dry is a little, or the chalk is a little different. 
Yeah. And I'm, and I'm shocked at how, how bright color wise this one came out. It's, um, I never used to think of myself as much of a colorist and, um, all of a sudden, all of these bright colors seem to be, I don't know, emanating from me. <laughs> mm. So I'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another one set kind of contrasting Pensgrove and Maine. The top is a, a moonscape that um, we actually saw um, from the backyard of the painter John Walker um, in Maine. And it was this beautiful moon um, over the water there. And when I got back, I, I painted it. Um, and then the other one contrasting with it, but with some similar colors in it is a, is a field in, in Pensgrove. So again, near the waterfront, but in this case, like with the woods painting kind of turning away from the waterfront um, to look in the opposite direction. And this one is called Golden Field. So Noreen, in conjunction with your show, your uh offering a a workshop in june actually the painted box workshop yeah every once in a while i paint on boxes um sometimes for artwork as like the one you see here um and like i said i've my color has really brightened up so this this is a little more indicative of uh the work from a couple of years ago but you can see that it actually echoes the same horizon and landscape that you saw in the drawing below, because it's really essentially the same view um, with the long, you know, long, thin, linear landscape of the Delaware River, again, with some ice flows in the front. Um, and then down in the bottom of the box, kind of inset into the bottom of the box. And those are actually, I don't normally do this, it's unusual for me, but those are actually photographs that are in set and then sort of painted over um, in there. So what attracts you about the box form? Well, this particular box was truly a found object, again, which is not something that I typically do, but we have a very old house in Salem County and we have an old pole barn in the back that is also very old. And I like to tell people, don't picture Martha Stewart because it's leaning kind of like this. Uh, at the moment. Um, <laughs> but we found this box in the barn. It had been left and it had surveyor's tools in it. Hmm. Um, so it's, I don't know how old it is and I don't know much else about it, but I, I just thought it was a really beautiful box and decided to do it. So that's the box with the lid kind of flipped open. Right. Um, so it's almost like if you close the box up again, then the painting is hidden. Mm -hmm. So how will you uh, set up the workshop for people? So I have a bunch of wooden boxes that I've kind of collected or people can bring their own if they have a cool wooden box that they've always wanted to paint. But I have a variety of cigar boxes and even a couple of larger um, wine boxes that I'm going to bring. Um, people can use either acrylic or oil, depending on what they like. You could also kind of collage or decoupage onto your box. So I'll bring a bunch of fun things that you can uh, collage onto your boxes if you prefer to do that or can stick with kind of the painting. Um, you certainly don't have to do a landscape. I've done um, boxes that were just for fun and I'll bring some of those samples to the workshop. I've done at least one other one that I considered an artwork that um, I call Witness Box because it was based on the barn from the movie Witness. And it too has kind of a two part. <laughs> it has the, the inside of the barn and the outside of the barn um, because it's a box that has a sliding front. So I'll bring that. Um, and then I have one that I'm making into a purse or a bag. So I'm gonna put a strap on it. So they can also be functional. So if you have something in mind for a box, you wanted to make a purse out of a cigar box and 
it's been sitting around and you just haven't been able to get to it, then bring it along to the workshop and sit for a few hours and then you'll be able to turn it into a bag. <laughs> Sometimes you collect these things and you don't want to throw them out because they're so attractive. So it gives you a reason to do something with them. Right. Yeah. Come on. It's just going to sit in your closet, but come right. to the workshop and then you'll paint it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, sounds good. So if people are interested, they can go to the studio page of our website and read all the details and sign up there. Um, well, it's a wonderful show, Noreen. Um, thank you. Yeah. And thank you so much for uh, speaking with me tonight. Thank you. And the show's up through May the 5th, and uh, we hope people can uh, come down and check it out.